when we talk about colonoscopy, if we're going to talk about that specifically as a, as a way to screen for colon cancer, we're going to talk about you know, the advantages of that test over the other ways to screen for colon cancer. So colonoscopy in 2015, we really want to focus on its ability to prevent colon cancer because when you look at different tests now, you want to kind of delineate them as an early detection test or as a prevention test. And colonoscopy does both, which again, we, which is why we, we think it's wonderful. You know, if we want to compare that to uh, getting a mammogram for breast cancer, well, a mammogram only can detect breast cancer early, can't prevent it. Still good, and, and again, we do the same thing with a colonoscopy. So if you have, you know, something wrong in the colon, we want to find it at, as early as we can because the treatments are easier and the outcomes in general are, are much better for you. Uh, but the prevention strategy, again, is where I think we get into, uh, you know, it's kind of a little bit more sexy, I guess, as, as something to talk about with patients because if we can prevent it, everybody signs up for that. They, they like that. And so if you look at colonoscopy more recently, we have actually, you know, hard data that's come out that's shown this. And we've always thought this to be true uh, because we know that if you have precancerous polyps in your colon, you want to get them out. And obviously, if you think you take them out, well, you should be preventing colon cancer. So we always thought this to be true. But more recently, we've had studies that have, that have come out that have you know, substantiated that, you know, that, that thought or theory. And even in the last couple of years, a study out of New England Journal of Medicine that showed a cohort of patients that uh, did colonoscopies through the late 80s and the 90s and the 2000s that showed about a 56% reduction in colon cancer. And this was before we had good you know, high-definition optics and probably better techniques of doing the exam. So I think that 56% is probably higher but of course that's what the data shows. So if I tell my patients, if you come in and do this test, we can provide that type of protection for you. And so that if we have, let's say your lifetime risk of colon cancer is 5%, well, if we can cut it to two and a half or less, I think most patients would choose to do the test. So another, another thing I tell everybody when they come in, I say, you know, the more you know about colonoscopy and what it can do for you, the more foolish patients are if they don't choose to do it, because it is a very, very good test. So secondarily, the, the, I guess one of the aspects of colonoscopy that drives a lot of anxiety is the whole sedation aspects and am I going to be awake during the exam, is it going to hurt? And I think over the last 20 years that we've been doing this, really high volume you know, screening since about 1995, sedation was kind of, I guess, I don't want to say it was left you know, under the table, but it was, you know, over the years it's become much more of a, of a priority, okay, and a lot of that was probably driven by patient's response. <laughs> Um, but it's important for us too as physicians because I can do a much better colonoscopy if I know my patient's comfortable. I'm not worried about them, right? I'm worried about what I'm doing. So in 2015, I think that there's, there's certainly the expectation that you know, you're going to be made comfortable during the examination. You're not going to be awake. Um, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't have any residual pain after the exam. Like, it can happen, but very rarely. So most patients during the procedure, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be out. They're not going to be, you know, feeling any discomfort. Third is, the, is, again, the preparation and, you know, talk about, I guess, some, some things that have been advanced in the last five or ten years. You know, if I'm going to talk to patients about preparation, I'm going to start by telling them that we used to give people a gallon, okay, you know, of, of, of prep, which, you know, drink a gallon of anything. It's not easy to do. You know, it's just a lot of fluid. And so over the years, we've, we've come with some newer preps that have been out for about two or three years. Uh, the newest one that we use is, is this, this little kit that we use right here called Suprep. And uh, it is a big box, but inside of this magical little box, we have two small bottles that we use um, that contain all the prep. And it's a total, okay, of 12 ounces of prep. Okay, now we're going to mix it in a little water and dilute it. And this is, this is it right here, just these, you know, these two small bottles. Um, so you're going to mix this with a little bit of water and drink it down. And the total volume of prep flu is actually only 32 ounces, which is a liter, which is a quarter of a gallon. So 25% of what we used to make you drink. And this is what we predominantly use here at the Baton Rouge Clinic because we, we like it because it's tolerated well and it works great too. It's one of the best preps we've ever had, honestly. Um, you've got to chase this down with some water. Okay, you got to you know, chase it with another liter of water, but most patients do okay with that. You know, drinking water is not a big deal. I guess after hearing this information, if you're still on the fence about you know, whether or not you really want to do this test, I would always recommend, you know, first maybe talking to your primary care physician because that's somebody you have a relationship with already and maybe discussing the options you know, that, that are there. Um, if you think you want to come in and have a discussion with a gastroenterologist, obviously to, you know, to, to talk more 
fine points about the examination, that's also something that I would recommend. But definitely talking to your doctor about the advantages of colonoscopy and what it can do for you uh, would, be, would be great.